morning. That's time for the news and sport from the borders with David Ferguson. Good morning. With Scottish Borders Council aiming to follow the government in declaring a housing emergency, a Selkirk-based company says it is well-placed to help with the national crisis. Barrett Developments are carrying out a £24 million expansion of its Oregon timber plant to produce more housing timber frames, having already doubled its manufacturing in the past five years in Selkirk. And a regional, the regional managing director, Douglas MacLeod, believes that they can help address the growing demand for housing. We certainly have capacity to supply more timber kit homes and build more homes. The very fact that we see a future and we are investing heavily in building more homes, we see the demand for homes. So the one thing that is clear, the Scottish Government have now recognised it. There is an emergency. There's a need for affordable homes, mid-market rent, social rent, or to buy. The, the demand has never been higher. However, councillors have agreed to close and sell off controversial temporary homeless accommodation in Kelso. The discontinuation—sorry, it's not easy for me to say this morning. The discontinuation of the nine units at Maxmill Park will be done on a phased basis as replacement accommodation is established in other areas. Housing officers in the borders are expecting close to 1,000 households to declare themselves homeless during this financial year, with demand for the current 155 temporary homeless units already at an all-time high. Kelso councillors Ewan Robson and Tom Weatherston believe closing Maxwell Park is the right decision. There will be a great sigh of relief uh, in Kelso that this place is coming to an end. Far better is to accommodate people in homeless accommodation uh, closer to where they come from uh, so that they can re-engage with their own communities. I uh, work with residents around there regularly and had some huge problems over the years with social behaviour. This is like a complex where they're all together. At least when they go into individual homes, they'll be in a community with other people and other children to play with and that sort of thing. Emergency meetings are to take place over the coming days in a bid to identify medical cover at Kelso and Dunn's community hospitals. We revealed last month that the region's medical director was fearing a temporary closure of beds following discharge at both centres and fears were expressed that additional workload of GPs could see similar problems at the region's other community hospitals in Peebles and Hoyke. While no solution has yet been found for Dunn's and Kelso, a commitment to continuing cover at Hoyke and Hay Lodge has been offered by local GP practices. An inner Leithen man is facing a total of nine different driving and drugs charges. 51-year-old Stephen Scoogle denies two counts of driving while disqualified, two charges of driving with no insurance and also dangerous driving. He also pled guilty... Pled, sorry, he also pled not guilty when he appeared at Selkirk Sheriff Court to failing to stop for police. Scoogle also denies possession of Class A and B drugs. A trial date has been set for August 8th. Now, two borders roads are to benefit from funding to improve timber transport. Scottish Forestry has awarded £341,000 to Scottish Borders Council to improve and strengthen two key haulage routes, which they say will make way for around 1.3 million tonnes of timber to be moved safely over the next decade. Strengthening, upgrading and passing places will be parts of the works on the B709 from Innerleithen to Colcor, while on the B63357 at Softree Green, resurfacing and strengthening works will be carried out. Now in sport, a new Wood has emerged into the Borders rallying scene and made an instant mark in his first event. Robbie Wood is the 19-year-old son of former Scottish champions Andrew and Anne. And after finishing 26th and 7th in class in the Border Counties Rally at the weekend with co-driver Craig Forsyth, he was presented with the Dr Bob Pawson Award for his inspiring debut. Wood admits that he has been inspired by his parents, but having won British Enduro and Motocross titles in recent years, he's not yet ready to quit the quad biking world. There is an element of pressure a little bit, but it doesn't affect me. I, I think it, it does help in ways as, as well. For what Dad's done and Mum's done and rallying it also helps to, to, to get noticed and, and whatnot. And, you know, if you do do well to get noticed for that, it definitely helps. At the moment, I'm still doing as much quad racing as ever, and uh, that that's not going to change very quickly. But I I don't know. We'll we'll wait and see. It's too early to say yet. <laughs>
In last night's East of Scotland football, Vale of Leithen lost 7-0 away to Kirkcaldy and Dysart. And in racing, two Hoyt jockeys completed doubles at Perth yesterday. Craig Nicholl on the Ewan Willans trained Nelly Blue Sky and the Cowboy Cooper for trainer Donald Willans, while Bruce Lynn rode Arctic Man and not in Kansas to victories. Well done to both there. Now with the border's weather, here's Kirstine MacDonald. Good morning. A rather grey, misty and damp start. During the morning, skies will brighten, spells of sunshine will break through, mist and low cloud will linger along North Sea coasts until afternoon. Highs of 16 to 18 Celsius with light winds. This evening and tonight, cloud will increase again from the east with the odd spot of drizzle and rather murky conditions. Lows tonight of around 8 to 10 Celsius. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. We'll be back at half past twelve, but now back to Good Morning Scotland. Radio. FM. Your smart speaker. And on BBC Sounds. BBC Radio Scotland. And this is Good Morning Scotland with Gary and Laura. It's just gone 25 to 9. Slovakia's Prime Minister Robert Fico remains in hospital this morning after an assassination attempt left him fighting for his life. 